guys you are welcome to today's teaching this is chemistry hangout i don't believe you guys are fine today you're welcome to today's class i want us to really pay maximum attention to today's topic i i, I love this topic so much because of his you know his wide range of usage in a whole lot of it and i'm going to be explaining it from the beginning to the end so i want you to pay maximum attention so I want you to pay a whole lot of attention to this topic. Very, very interesting, very wonderful topic. So I want to believe you guys are fine. If you are new to this channel, kindly click on the subscribe button. This is one of the best channel on YouTube as far as chemistry content is concerned. So if you are, if you are just watching this channel for the very first time, kindly click on the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you'll be notified if I drop any video. So welcome once again to do today's teaching very wonderful teaching and what is the topic we have for today the topic is radioactivity very wonderful topic interesting fantastic topic you know why i love this topic is because of the wide you know range of usage in a whole lot of fields radioactivity is used in the agricultural sector you know in the medical sector as 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 a whole lot of you know a whole lot of uses and that's the reason why i am in fact i'm much interested in the topic one of the topics i love so so much in science because of its wide you know usage because of its you know its uses in the whole lot of it so let's pay maximum attention so that we can get the gist now what is radioactivity what brought about radioactivity what we, do we use this radioactivity for why do we need to study radioactivity? This is a this is questions that will be you know bugging a whole lot of people's mind. This is question that a whole lot of people will be finding difficult to understand. But let me take us back a bit so that I can explain how radioactivity came in place. Let me take us back a bit. We have learned about a theorem in our rudiment chemistry called the John Dalton atomic theorem. I want to believe you are familiar with this. I've done even this in one of my videos where I talked about all this John Dalton atomic theory. And if you remember the theory of this very particular English scientist named John Dalton, he postulated some theories. And one of the theories is that atom, you know, atom cannot be created nor destroyed i'm just taking us aback so we know where all this radioactivity actually came from atom cannot be created nor destroyed he gave another word he said all elements okay he said all elements are made up of small all elements are made up of small indivisible particles indivisible particles made up of small invisible particle called atoms right okay number three he said that atoms of the same element are like atom of the same element atom of the same element are alike and different from atom of other elements and different from atoms of other elements. I want to believe that I want to you the very beginning, the very so we get the full view of how this came in place and what we are telling you before. Number four, he said that atom of different atoms of different elements can combine atom of different elements can combine in simple o numbers in simple o numbers okay in simple o numbers simple o numbers ratio okay simple o number ratio to form compounds to form Compounds. I want to believe we are still very much together. And the fifth one, he said, all chemical changes, 
all chemical changes all chemical changes result from the combination from the combination okay from the combination or separation of atoms or separation of atoms this was John Dalton atomic postulate this was John Dalton atomic theory this is what we postulated okay I, I'm not explaining you know I'm just giving us this so that we understand the full gist of how radioactivity came in place what brought about radioactivity now if you look at all those laws if you remember in our rudiment chemistry after he postulated this and a whole lot of scientists did their experiments a lot of you know a lot of experiment because a lot of theories are is subjected to other experiment so when they did their experiment they nullified some of these theories why they modified some of these theories if you remember like this one that it said all atom atom of same elements are alike like this one and are different from atom of all other elements you know they did the modifications and a phenomenon like isotopy you know nullify this that you can have the, an element with same atomic number or different mass number so but we are not actually going to i want to explain this this very particular first one i wrote that atom can not be created nor destroyed if you remember that they now did a modification to that very particular theory if you remember if you have taken our rudiment class if you remember our rudiment chemistry they now did a modification to that first one that's they did a modification okay they did a modification that atom cannot be created atom cannot be created nor destroyed for ordinary reaction for ordinary reaction i want to believe this is clear for ordinary chemical reaction okay but for nuclear reactions for nuclear reactions for nuclear reactions atom can be created and destroyed so for john dalton atomic theory he postulated that Atom cannot be created nor destroyed. But experiments from likes of a wonderful scientist called Henry Bancrell. Okay, yeah. And that's where, so that's where this modification comes from. In 1896, in 1896, a man called Henry Bancrell, Henry Bancrell, in 1896, okay. Discover something wonderful. And what did he discover? He discovered that uranium, uranium salt, okay, uranium salt spontaneously, uranium salt spontaneously emitted radiations. That is an element. And it, it, you know, it spontaneously emitted radiations. And that's what, where this radioactivity we want to talk about came from. And from this radioactivity, a lot of things is happening in the nucleus. Yes, there are a lot of changes happening in the nucleus. There are a lot of energy given out. And that's why in radioactivity, there is something we call nuclear fusion. And there is something we call nuclear fusion. Okay. So in this very particular nuclear fusion, you can have an atom breaking down. Okay, to give atom of another element different from atom you started with. So this was the postulations that actually nullified that very particular John Dalton atomic theory that the atom cannot be created or destroyed. So on discovering this by this man called Henry Bunker in 1896, on discovering this very particular, you know, this very particular experiment, he now modified John Dalton atomic theory. I want to believe you are still with me. So when he modified John Dalton atomic theory, he now modified it to say, Atom cannot be created or destroyed for an ordinary chemical reaction. That the postulation of John Dalton only works for ordinary reaction. That if you come to nuclear reactions, if you come to nuclear reactions, because in nuclear reactions, atom can be created and atom can be destroyed. I can have simple nuclei coming together to give me a bigger one, which is nuclear fusion, nuclear fusion or fusion, and I can have 
a big one breaking down to give me nuclear fission. So, on this very particular account, and the bank ran, you know, modified the John Dalton atomic theory and said, no, for ordinary chemical reaction, atom can be created, atom cannot be created. For ordinary chemical reaction, atom cannot be created and atom cannot be destroyed because it's just like we are rearranging. I don't believe that's clear. But for nuclear reactions, atom can be created and atom can be destroyed. And this is based on the topic that I'm discussing today, which is called radioactivity. Some school of thought will say it is nuclear, you know, it is nuclear chemistry. Some will say it is nuclear physics, you know. But when you see topics like that, we are still talking about radioactivity. So, what we're actually doing today is radioactivity. You can see where it's actually emanated from. It's from the postulate of John Dati. After working on this postulate, they saw it is not all reactions that atom cannot be created nor destroyed. For nuclear reactions, atom can be created and atom can be destroyed. And it is that very particular, you know, discovery of Henry Bancroft that actually proved that particular theory of John Dalton wrong. They, it's not actually wrong anyway because they had to modify it. Because it's, it's still old for ordinary chemical reaction, but for nuclear reaction, atom can be created and atom can be destroyed. I hope you are paying attention. I hope you are paying attention. So, what do we now mean by this radioactivity we are talking about? So, having known this, having understood that this very particular concept came from the, you know, the discovery of Henry Bancroy, what is radioactivity? What do we mean by radioactivity? Radioactivity, okay? Radioactivity. Okay? Let me define it in there. So radioactivity is the spontaneous, is the spontaneous breaking down, is the spontaneous breaking down, spontaneous Unstable nuclei of unstable nuclei of the atom of an element of the atom of an element, okay, by the emission by the emission of your alpha, your alpha, let me write it, your alpha, you know, beta or gamma. Beta radiation, gamma radiation, with the production, with the production of energy. So when I say energy, is in form of heat, energy. So I can say radioactivity is the spontaneous breaking down of a stable nuclei of the atom of an element, you know, which now will lead by the emission of your alpha, your beta, or gamma radiation with the production of energy. So in school of thought, we also see, we are still saying the same thing, that radioactivity, so that radioactivity is the spontaneous, is the spontaneous, is the spontaneous okay emission of radiation of radiation by an element? Can I still say that your is the spontaneous is the spontaneous emission of radiation by an element? You know. Emit. I think let me put it that way so that you'll be clear here. So radioactivity is the spontaneous breaking down of an unstable nuclear of an atom. Let me put it that way. Radioactivity is the spontaneous breaking down of a stable nuclear by an atom, by an element, which leads 
let me put it that way an element which leads to do you get that now so which leads to the emission which leads to the which leads to d so let me put this mark here so i can say radioactivity is the spontaneous breaking down of unstable nuclei the atom of an element which leads to the emission of alpha beta or gamma radiation to the production of energy so i want, I want it to be you know i want it to be a very simple them so that we can understand what is the meaning of this it means that there are some elements we call radioactive elements so it means that there are some elements we call radioactive elements okay and when you talk about radioactive elements, you are talking about elements that you know gradually elements that gradually break down break down gradually break down and emit radiation break down and emit radiation so which means in our periodic table there are elements we call radioactive elements and how do we know them how do we know these elements are radioactive the way we know that radioactive is that they gradually break down because they are not stable for them to attain stability now they need to naturally break down and when they break down, they now emit either, you know, alpha or beta or gamma ray. And that's why if you check our periodic table, if you go to your, you know, your period six and seven, because of their heavy nuclei, most of them are radioactive elements. Yes, likes of uranium, likes of thorium, all those elements, they are radioactive elements. And why are they radioactive elements? Because they have ability to gradually break down. And when they break down, what do they do? They emit radiation. I want to believe that is clear. So if you go to your periodic table, likes of thorium, likes of uranium are radioactive elements. And this very partic um, particular experiment was carried out. I think I said that earlier, was carried out by uranium where he saw that the uranium salt was actually, you know, gradually breaking down and it was emitting radiation. So very, very important when we talk about radioactivity, we are talking about the gradual breaking down of an unstable nuclei of an atom, which will now lead to when they gradually break down. In the process of them breaking down to attain stability, they now emit rays, and these rays are either alpha, and either beta, and either gamma. I want to believe this is clear. Now, for further explanation or for further understanding, you know, I said that we have the alpha. We have the beta and we have the gamma. And this was the practical experiment. This was how the man was able to get all these rays, some of their property. The experiment he carried out is that he looked for a lead block. Let's say this is a lead block. Okay? This is a lead block. Right? It's a lead block. Okay, let me draw it to be a bit bigger. Let me, let me draw it to be. So let's take for example, this is a lead block, and I will explain why. So if this is a lead block, let me draw it bigger. Okay. So if this is a lead block, he now placed a radioactive, a radioactive element. Good example, let's say radium is a radioactive element. And the reason why he's actually using this lead block is because for our gamma ray, our gamma ray. One of the things that can absorb your gamma ray is your lead block. So he knows that, you know, from experiment that the gamma ray has, you know, high penetrating power out of all those rays. I'm going to, I'm still going to talk about their characteristic. So he now used a lead block. And the reason is because so that this very particular radium, when it's breaking down, will not spread into all this place. Because if you did not put this very particular lead block to absorb it, all these rays will be spread to all this places and you know because they have high penetrating power they might actually be dangerous so that's why they are using this we call it a lead block okay so in order to get this to a magnetic field I don't know if this is clear so when it's subjected to a magnetic field he saw that there is a ray going like this there is another one that is like this and there is another one that acts much deflection like this. 
So let me say this is a magnetic field. Okay. So in this magnetic field, he said this is the south pole. Using this as the south pole, this is actually the north pole. And there is a photographic plate here. You know, there is a photographic plate here. So this is actually a photographic plate. I want to believe this is clear. So on looking at this, he saw that this very particular, you know, radiation is moving towards this the, 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 the southern area, the, the south pole. It's moving towards the south pole. Why this one is not moving to the south, nor is it moving to, you know, this one is moving to the south pole. This one is not moving to the south nor the north. Why this one is moving to the north? And don't forget that the south pole is your negative pole. Just like this is your negative pole. Why the north pole is your what? Is your positive pole. So with this experiment, you will see in the magnetic field, you will see this one is, it, it has much deflection. So I now concluded that since your alpha, okay, since he knows that our alpha is positively charged, our alpha is positively charged, and there is an emission here that is moving towards the negative pole. The fundamental law of electricity is that like poles we repair, or like poles we attract. Okay, so as this very particular one is, you know, deflecting towards the negative pole, it means that this will be the alpha. This one is moving towards the positive pole. It means that this will be beta because beta is negatively charged. Why? It knows that this one is not moving either to the south or to the north, meaning it is neutral. And that is called gamma because this one is not positively charged or negatively charged. I want to believe we are, we are, we are getting this. He tried this on an electric field too using the same lead block using a random sample, okay? Still going, you know, towards this place. This is going towards this. This is also going towards this. And in an electric field, he said this is the negative. This is the word positive. Same thing happened. But the only difference, please, I want you to note this guy. The only difference is that if you look at the, the beta ray here, there is much deflection in the magnetic field than the electric field. This is the electric field. This one is electric field. So you see, like the deflection here is almost the same, but for your magnetic field, there is much deflection towards the north pole for the beta ray. And this is our photographic plate. So same thing is so that alpha is deflected here, gamma is not deflected, and what beta is deflected here towards the what the positive pole, while alpha is deflected towards the negative pole. And from here, they now came with some of the properties of this very particular rays that I want us to talk about. Some of the properties of this rays. So let's talk about properties of our alpha. Properties of our Number one, let's talk about the properties, the properties of what of our alpha rays. Please, I want us to. to is that number one, your alpha are fast moving state of positively charged particles. They are fast moving streams. They are fast moving streams of positively charged particles, meaning they are positively charged. Okay? So take note of that very important number. That's number one for alpha. Number two, they have low penetrating power. They have low penetrating power. Okay? They have low penetrating power for alpha. Please take note of that. Low penetrating power. Number three, they are also, they are also referred to as helium nucleus. 
please pay attention to this because you are going to be using this. Why are they referred to as helium nucleus? Helium has a mass number of four, an atomic number of two. We write helium like this. Okay. So when you see any inscription like this in radioactivity, it means alpha particle. So we can have them like this, or we can have this symbol. We can have this symbol, very, very important. We can have this. Two helium. Alpha. That is very clear. Number four. Very, very important. Number four. They are deflected. They are, we have seen that in the experiment. They are deflected towards the negative plate in an electric field plate in an electric field. And why is it like that? Why is it like that? Because they are positively very important. Number five, they can be stopped. They can be stopped. They can be stopped by thin paper. Can be stopped by thin paper. Which means because of their low penetration, By thin sheet of paper. I number six. They have. They have high ionization. They have high ionization energy. They have high. They have high ionization energy. So don't get it mixed up. They have low penetrating power, but they have the highest ionization energy. Yes, they have the highest ionization energy. So take note of this, guys. Very, very important. This is very, very important because it is a problem when we begin to talk about radioactivity. So they are fast moving streams of positively charged particles. They have low penetrating power. They are also referred to as helium nucleus. So when I see this inscription, and I see this very particular inscription. I know you are talking about alpha or D. So take note of this. Let me write it here again. Helium, you can see four, two like this, or you see something like this. I mean alpha. This is very, very clear. Let's move to properties of beta. Let's move to properties of beta particles. Property of beta particles. Number one, the they are what they are. Negatively charged. Now, why do we say negatively charged particles? Because in the experiment, they are deflected towards the positive plate. Okay, so they are negatively they are negatively charged particles. Okay, so they are negatively charged particles. Very important. They are stopped moving. They are fast moving streams. They are fast moving streams of electrons. Okay? So they are fast moving streams of electrons. Number three, they are represented. They are represented, you know, by by E is zero minus one or this symbol. Okay, so if you because we have already said what is the meaning of this E is telling us that they are fast moving streams of E is actually denoting electrons. Okay, and they have a mass number of zero and atomic number. Of one. Yeah. And you know atomic number or we say of minus one. So when you see this inscription, knows that we are actually talking about beta. Very, very important. We are following this. I don't believe we are. We are following this. Very, very important. We need to know this. Yes. We need to know. And we said that they are deflected. They, they are deflected 
towards that deflected towards the positive the positive plate in an electric field in an electrostatic field anyone i want to believe this is very very clear That's very 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 clear number five this one very very important they can be stopped they can be stopped they can be stopped by a lead sheet I want to believe this is Your, like your, your alpha is a so let me say they can be stopped by. To, can be stopped by lead sheet or let me put that so that or an aluminium sheet. So these are eye penetrating power. Let me write that. Very important. You have eye penetrating power on that of alpha. You have eye penetrating power on that of alpha. So let me write that they they have more penetrating power. They have more penetrating penetrating power. They have more penetrating power, okay, than they have more penetrating power than alpha particles. Than alpha particles. Okay. So don't be convinced don't be confused here. They said it can be stopped by lead sheet or aluminum sheet. Write a metal paper. When you talk about metal, lead is a metal, aluminium is a metal. So don't be convinced about that. Don't be confused about that. Very, very important. Okay, so these are properties of beta, but take note of this. I've said that when you see this is zero minus one, or you see this symbol, it actually means beta. So very, very important. I want to believe we are still following. All these things are very, very interesting. Very, very interesting topic in science. Let's move to the properties of gamma. Properties of gamma. So we need to know this. Very, very important. Gamma particles. Properties of gamma particles. Number one. They are electromagnetic in nature. They are electromagnetic, okay? Electromagnetic in nature. Very important. We have, you know that electromagnetic. We don't need actually need a magnetic. Yes, we don't actually need a magnetic. So electromagnetic in nature. Two, they have the highest penetrating power. They have the highest penetrating power. Have the highest penetrating power, so they have more penetrating power than beta and alpha. Very, very important. Number three, they are not deflected. They are not deflected. They are not deflected by electric field. And I've shown us that they are not deflected to either the positive or the negative plate. Why? Because they are neutral. They have no charge. You need to know that. They have no, they have no charge, so they are not charged. They are neither positively charged or negatively. Gets deflected. And number five, you know they can stop. They can be stopped by a large lead block. A large lead block 
Don't forget there's a difference between a lead sheet and a lead block. You know, that's the reason why they are using a lead sheet here. Some people will even use aluminum foil. Yeah. Some people will use aluminum foil. Some people will use lead sheets. Some people will use aluminum sheets. Very, very important. But because of the penetrating power of gamma, we cannot stop them by a lead sheet. We can stop them by a, a large lead block. There is a difference between a large sheet, just like you have a sheet of paper and a block. There is a difference between them. And the reason why we are using that large lead block for gamma is that they have high penetrating power. You know, the least ionization potential. Don't forget that, you know, for, for, our, for our app, I can see, I said they have high ionization energy. For gamma, they have low. In fact, they have the least ionization energy. They have the least ionization energy. They have the least ionization energy. So, in terms of, it means that in terms of penetrating power, okay, get this right. Very, very important. In terms of penetrating power, in terms of penetrating power, okay, the highest we now be in terms of penetrating power, we now have the gamma as the highest, then the beta, then the alpha. Do you see that now? But in terms of ionization energy, in terms of ionization energy, we have alpha to have the highest, followed by what beta, then what our gamma. So this is in terms of increasing order. Sorry, in terms of, yeah, in terms of, okay, this is actually decreasing from gamma penetrating power, so decreasing order. I think that's what I did. Decreasing order. Okay. So, which means that gamma has the highest, then beta follow, then alpha follow. Do you get that now? So, which means alpha has the least penetrating power, y beta, y gamma. So, we have to be very careful of this in our exam. If it is in increasing order, then I need to start from alpha to beta to gamma, but decreasing order. To be gamma, beta, alpha. Do you get that stuff? So very, very important. So in order to this rays, where this particle emits this rays, they emit either alpha, they emit either beta, or they emit either gamma. And the properties of these three rays, of these three rays, has been looked at. Very, very important. Now let me talk about another ray that is very, very important, and we call it an X radiation, okay, which popularly we known as an X ray. The reason why we have to be very careful of this is because your, your X ray is not a natural ray. Unlike particles when they, you know, when they break down, they can emit gamma, beta, or alpha, but they can never emit X-ray. You know why? Because X-ray is an induced ray. Okay, what do I mean by induced ray? You force X-ray to happen. Yes, we force X-ray to happen. And that is why your gamma, your beta, your alpha are natural kind of ray. Why your X-ray is an artificial kind of ray? Because elements will not break down naturally to give x-ray. I don't I don't know if that is clear. Elements will not naturally break down to give x-ray. We have to induce it. We have to force x-ray to happen. And that's how this very particular x-ray. And that is why your x-rays are also electromagnetic waves. And I'll tell you how they are being induced. Your x-rays are electromagnetic waves produced they are produced by allowing fast moving electrons by allowing fast moving electrons to bombard to bombard metal 
tongues. E.G. Let's take tungsten as example. This is a metal. Do you get that now? Now, what happens in this process? For every metal, there must because for every metal there must be valence electron. So let me take for example, this is the metal. I'm just using this as an example. This is the metal, and these are the electrons of the metal. Okay. These are the electrons of the metal. So how do we produce X-rays? Now, for me to produce X-rays, I will now bombard this very particular metal with fast moving electrons okay so i'm bombarding with this fast moving electron as i bombard this metal with fast moving electrons because of their high energy because of the high energy they are coming with they will displace the electrons that are here before like they will them. i don't know if you are they will knock them out let me use that word they will knock these electrons that are already here before they will knock them out and the fast moving electrons i bombarded this metal which will now replace the electron that they have that, that are there before. So in the process of me bombarding this metal with fast moving electrons and they are now knocking out the electron this metal has before, a radiation will be produced which we call the X radiation. I want to believe you are learning. And that's how your X radiation is being formed. So it is formed as a result of bombarding a particular metal with and you know fast moving electrons that have high energy so that they can remove the electrons that are there before and replace them. So in the process of them replacing them now the radiation will be formed which we refer to as the X radiation. I want to believe that is true. And for the X radiation, which is our X rays, they have their properties very, very important. They have their proper. Don't forget, I said it's an artificial ray because we actually force it to happen. Okay, not unlike your your you know your gamma alpha beta that they have tendency to emit that on their own. Okay, so but your X-ray is not natural; it's artificial because you have to bombard a particular metal with fast-moving electrons so that they can knock out. The electrons that are in the metals before and in the process of the fast moving electrons replacing the metals replacing the electrons of the metals the radiation will be emitted which we call yes no? this is so for the your x-rays your x-rays can penetrate your x-rays can penetrate easily you know can penetrate easily to most Solid substance, solid substance, which are you no know, far to visible, far to visible light. So this is one of the properties of your X. So they can penetrate easily through solid substance, not molecules. Solid substance, true solid substance so very very important of this thing it will help us like visible like visible light there to they are electromagnetic they are electromagnetic and what do i mean by electromagnetic i think i've explained that before they don't require a material medium they are electromagnetic waves they don't actually require a material medium number Because there are two types of X rays. We can have hard X rays and we can have soft X rays. Very, very important. We can have hard X rays. So the hard one have more penetrating power. Have more penetrating power than the soft one. Have more penetrating power than the soft X rays. So your X rays too, we have hard, we have soft. Very, very important. And you know, we have a lot of uses. They have uses too in the Medical world, they have uses, and one of the uses in chemistry, yes, one of the uses of X ray is that we can use it to study the arrangement. We can use it to study the arrangement of particles in crystal lattice. We can use it to study the arrangement of particles in what? In crystal lattice. 
can use it to study the arrangement. You know, when I say crystal lattice, I'm talking about solid substance that are well arranged. So we can use it to study, you know, the arrangement of particles in crystal in organic molecules and and even in big organic molecules and even in big you know organic molecules big organic molecules like proteins very important so i'm just putting more emphasis on this one than we have yes your add x-rays your add x-rays don't forget i said they have more penetrating power can be used for destroying cancerous growth can be used for destroying cancerous growth. Can be used for destroying cancerous growth. Very, very important. Okay, let me do another. Let me do just do the last one. You can, you can read this up yourself. But I just want to give you a very good foundation of how this is. Now, when we are solving questions, it will be very easy for us. So, our first exercise too can be used in medicine to photograph. Can easy to photograph human body parts, and that's why when you have a dislocation and inner dislocation, they say you should go for an X-ray. Yes, they say you should go for X-ray. So maybe when you have a broken shoulder and internal dislocation, they ask you to go for X-ray. So the X-ray can be used to take the picture of the inner part of your body and tell us what the problem is. So can actually, you know, can actually tell what. The problem is where is the bone broken? What is the job? So very, very important. Is important. So we have learned the properties of X-rays. We have learned the properties of alpha, beta, and gamma, and that will give us a good foundation about radioactivity. You know what I love radioactivity is that wide range of uses in the medical field. You know, using it for sterilization, very important. Using it in medicine, very, very important. You know, all those things make me love them. I don't think only medicine. Even to agricultural uses, to agricultural uses, your radioactivity is very, very important. So we are still going to talk about that when we get there. So let's take note of this. Your X-rays is not a natural type of radioactivity. It's artificial because we have to induce it. But we are still going to talk about that. Okay, so let's talk about... I want to believe this is clear. Now. So let's talk about detection. How can we detect those rays? Detection of radioactivity. How can we detect the, those rays? If we want to detect those rays, we can use number one, we can use the photographic thing. I'll just give five. That's fine. We have a lot, we have more than five, but I'll just give five. We have, you know, now the photographic detect. You can have a Jajamula cancer. Can use that too. The Jajamula cancer. There are three. You can have diffusion cloud chamber. These are instruments for detecting those rays. You can have a diffusion cloud chamber. Very, very important. You can have a scintillation cancer. And have a scintillation counter. Okay, you can have also yes. I think I remember that. You can have also the pulse electroscope. You can have the pulse electroscope that can be used to. You can have the pulse electroscope. Which one again? Can I remember? I still remember one. I think I have one. Yeah, yes. I think I remember this. You can have. A solid state detector. I think I've read about that too. A solid state detector. A lot of them can do research. So we can use all these to detect radioactivity. We can use all these to detect radioactivity. We have a lot of them. It's that for now. So very, very important. Don't forget, this is very, very, very important. This is very, very important. So very, very important. We have also, as instrument, we can use to actually detect 
that very particular radio activity very very now let talk, let's talk about the types of decay we have talked about that but let's still further discuss about that, that types of decay we have said that you can have an alpha type of decay okay you can have an alpha i want you to pay attention to this now because this has given more an alpha type of decay Decay, and we can have gamma. We have said that they don't have gamma decay. They just move from gamma to gamma decay. What kind of energy is actually so? We can have this type of decay. And how do we know them? Please don't forget, I said another word for alpha is 4 2 helium. Or we use this symbol. You still remember for better decay, we have you know zero minus one, or we have this symbol. Why gamma? Since they have no charge, they have no charge, they have no mass. We just use this symbol for them as gamma. Now, let's take for examples. I have a question like this. I have a question. They gave me a question. I'll be picking. I'll be picking from our past question, jam past question, so that you can see that if all these things, okay, if I have all these things, okay, if I have all these things, how do you know them? 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 Now look at this. I have. Ninety-two uranium decay to two, three, four, ninety thorium K plus X plus X. The question now says identify X. How do I identify X? Please, I want us to pay maximum. I want us to pay maximum attention to this. Now look at the mass number here. Two, three, look at the mass number here. Two, three, four. Irrespective of it being a nuclear reaction, the masses must still be balanced. I want to believe that is clear. The masses must still be balanced. The mass number must be balanced. The atomic number must be balanced. I want to believe we are on the same, you know, we are on the same we are on the same path now. So look at this. I have 38. I have 234. Here I have 92. I have 90. What will I be adding to 234 to balance it to 238? That will be 4. Definitely. Okay. If I put 4 here, 4 here, right? If I put 4 here, 234 plus 4 will give me 238. Mass number is balanced. Don't forget, I told you nuclear reactions have to be balanced. The mass number on the right is equal to the mass number on the left. The atomic number on the right is equal to the atomic number on the left. So look at this 92. Look at this 90. What will I add to 90 to make it balance to 92? That means I'll be adding 2. Can you see that? They now say identify X. Definitely, your S is what is an alpha particle. Your S. Is an alpha particle. I want to believe this is clear. So this is going to get a lot of questions from guys. So this is a lot, 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 lot of questions from this very particular thing. So this is going to get lots, lots, at least lots of questions from the way we're balancing, 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 the way we're so look at this. Look at another one. We are still on alpha particle. Look at another one. We have 14, 7. Okay. This plus they gave us y, right? And I gave us this to be 78 oxygen plus 
one one hydrogen. They still say identify Y. So how do we identify Y? Don't forget to have said everything on the right side. It's on the most. The mass number must be equal. The atomic number must be equal. So let's see. This is 14. We want to identify Y. For everything here is mass number here is 14. All the atomic number here is 7, right? Now let's look at this place. Let's look at take a look at this place. We have 17 plus 1, making 18. The total mass number here is 18. And we have 8 plus 1, making what? Making 9, right? So all the mass number on this side is 18, and on this side is 9. But let's go to this side, 14. What will I add to 14? Give me 18. Definitely that's 7. And what will I add to 7 to give me 9? Definitely that is 2. So our y is also our alpha particle. That's, that's interesting. Okay, so let's do another example. Very simple. Very simple. Very, very simple. I am not saying that every time it's going to be alpha. So I'm not saying every time it's going to be alpha. No, it's going to be gamma. It's going to be gamma and alpha. Gamma and alpha. Those, 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 Yes. So let's take another example. Let's take another example. Very important. Let's take another example. Let's take another example. Let's take another example. I'm saying that, you know, Bodies. Look at this Look at this one. They said two, two, six, two, two, six, eighty-eight radial. Okay. Break it down to give two, 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 eighty-six Rn plus. Plus Z, right? Plus Z. Don't forget, you should know that that after all this, plus you know, energy will definitely be given off because in radioactivity there is a whole lot of energy that is being given off, but it doesn't affect anything. You no, know, it doesn't affect anything. Just showing us that energy is always given off. So some will put it, some they will not. But we must know that energy will be given off. So they, we should identify Z. I want to believe somebody will, uh, uh, has even done this. Somebody that is following me would have done this. You can see 222, 226. So what are we going to add to 222 to be balanced? That's 4, definitely. 88, 86, so 2. So this is also an alpha. So I want to believe this is very, very clear. Let's move to the better type now. In some cases, it can be better. Okay. Don't forget we said our beta as zero and minus one. Okay, very important. So let's take it. No, B E eleven four. Right? And they gave us and they gave us eleven five beryllium plus 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 C. Right? They said we should identify, identify C. Now look at that. We have said the mass number still be balanced. It must still be balanced. You know, we just need to understand that the mass number on the right hand side was equal to the mass number on the left hand side, and the atomic number on the right hand side was equal to the atomic number on the left hand side. So if we look at this one, this is 11, and this is also 11. Which means definitely we are not supposed to add anything. Here will be zero, definitely. Because 11 plus is zero is going to give us 11. Well, this is five. If I add one here, it will be five plus one. That is six. And this is four. It will not be balanced. So what do I need to do to five so that it will be balanced with four? I need to remove one from it. 
Let's see that. So five minus one because it's just like mathematically, it's just like I'm saying five plus minus one, and that will be five plus times minus is minus one. To give us four. Do you see? So to be balanced with this. So our C is what is a beta. You have to know which one is better, which one is gamma by trying to balance the equation. So when you now try to balance the equation, you will now know if it is alpha or beta or, or gamma. And if it is gamma, don't forget to say it has no mass. If it is gamma, it is gamma, you know, because it doesn't have mass. Don't forget, it doesn't change. So just like that. A lower state, a more state. I can just have something if I see something like this. Just an example. See something like this, and several things go back. Then I see you still have something like this. 60, 27, you know, go back. You can just have plus, you know, this is gamma. There is no change in the mass number or atomic number and energy. Will be generated. So this is so if I have an equation like this, where 60 years is equal to 60 years, 27 years is equal to 27. That means they are balanced already, meaning it is a you know a gamma type of particle that doesn't have to change the atomic number or the mass number. I want to believe this is clear. Okay, let me use this jump question to look at the jump question. Jump question. They said a nuclei 20224 Y emits in such session, emits in succession an alpha particle, emits in succession an alpha particle and a beta particle. Right? The alpha the atomic, please read this very well. The atomic number of the resulting, the atomic number of the resulting nuclide, nuclide is A198, B83, C82, D80. Now look at that. Now let's, let's see what is happening in that particular element. Now. Let's see. This is the element. They said Y20284. Right? Now emit an alpha. Yes. So, and if it emits an alpha, it means it has mass number of four, atomic number of two. That will be what? Helium, right? Plus, what will now be the element? You know, from right? This is so if I minus 4 from 202, it will be remaining 198, right? If I minus 2 from this, it will be remaining 82. Why? So this is what the element is going to be now. So the mass number of the elements now will be 198 and 82. If we still add 4 plus 198, it will still give us what? 202. Right? So if I still add 2 to 82, it will still give me 82. So they now say it emits better again. After emitting alpha, it emits beta. So this very particular nuclide emits beta again. So can I have this one nine eight eighty two emits beta. What is beta? Zero minus one electron. So so what will now be the mass number and the atomic number of the nuclide now? The new element y is zero one nine eight. It's not changing. So this will still be one nine eight. I want to believe that is clear. But look at this, 82. If I have 82 here, what will I put here to be balanced? If I go and put 82 here, 82 minus 1 will give me 81. It will not still be balanced. So I have to put what here? 83. That means this will be 83. So that 83 minus 1 will give me 82. So let me just be careful. The question was the atomic number. I know the number done is the atomic number from my rudiment chemistry, and this one is the mass number. So some people will not be careful 
You go and choose 198, and that's the mass number. You'll be wrong. They said the atomic number. So the atomic number is what is 83. Simple. Very, very simple. Probability to square. Very, 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 very simple. Very, very, very simple. I want to believe this is clear. Another question, you know, just try questions yourself. There are a lot of questions you can try yourself. Very, very important. They said, how many, how many beta particles? How many beta particles? This is another question. How many beta particles are emitted? How many beta particles are emitted in the radioactive? In the radioactive decay of one that's one nine eight okay seventy nine plus okay going to one nine eight eighty hg how many beta particles is the meter? Let's see. So let's solve the question. They said a they said a one. B, they said 2. C, they said 3. D, they said 4. So let's see this. 198, 198. That's balance. So plus 198, 198. That's 0. 198, 198 is balance. I don't need to add anything. That's why I'm putting 0 here. Okay. This is 79. And this is 80. I need to remove 1 from this. That will be minus 1. E. So how many beta particles? Just one. Just one of beta particle is emitted. And that is so all these things, you know, you become good at it. You solve questions. Let me solve one question again, and I'll move to type of activity and still explain something. So very, very important. I think this is another. This was for there for them 2004. Okay, give this and you get this, you get two, two, six, and two, two, eight, and two, and two, and two, and two, and X and X is at X, so they will start X and Plus the radical alpha particle. So the radical alpha, what is the value? What is the value of x? In the nuclear equation above, so the radical alpha 220. I hope somebody can even do this before I'm even writing the option. If I've been listening to this, you have even answered this before I even finish writing the option. Because we have explained this. So look at this. Alpha particle. I know this will be 4 and 2. Since it's alpha particle, this is the sign to be 4 and 2. So 2 to 6. Do you see that? 2 to 6. And this is 4 already. Meaning the one that is remaining will be 2, 2, 2. Yes, now. Because if this is 4, I need to subtract it from this to get the remaining. So 2 to 2 plus 4 will give me what? 2 to 6. So very simple question. They just ask, what is the value of x? If you understand it, there would not be issue. Would not be issue. So very very important. Either of those things can be vibrated. Yes. Either of those things can be vibrated. But if you follow all these things I'm doing, these are just these are you know ways by which you can get Very important. Now, let's move to types of radioactivity. 
I want to pay maximum attention to this again. Types of radioactivity. Number one, we have the natural radioactivity. We have the natural radioactivity, and we have two, we have the artificial radioactivity. We have the natural radioactivity, and we have the artificial radioactivity. What do we mean by natural radioactivity? You know, from the word natural, we are not forcing it. Rain, force, you know, this is a natural source of water. It's not man made. It's not natural. Natural radioactivity. They are spontaneous. They are spontaneous breaking down. They are spontaneous breaking down of the nucleus. They are spontaneous breaking down of the nucleus of an atom of an atom during you know during which during which alpha or, or beta or gamma yes or gamma or a combination or a combination of any a combination of any or all the three the three I'll explain or all the three and eat are released. And eat are released. So what do you mean by natural radioactivity? Natural radioactivity means I'm not forcing the element to break down. They just break down on their own. Because and I'll tell you how the question is how sir, but how do I do this is natural radioactivity? Look at this. If I have two two six, okay. I have 88 random going to 42 42 helium plus like the example I have given 226 RN plus energy. This is natural. Why? Here is the element that is breaking down. This is it, sir. I hope you are following. If you check on this side, the only thing you are seeing is the element that is breaking down. They are not combining anything with it. What you are seeing is just only this element. This is a typical example of natural. Meaning they are not forcing, they are not adding anything to this element here to break down. This element is just, you know, spontaneously breaking down to give you all this. To give all this. I want to believe that is clear. So this is natural. Natural means they are not adding anything to it. It's just breaking down. I can have these two. This is another natural. I can have two, two, six. Okay. I have 86. And it breaks down to give me two, zero, minus one. This plus two, 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 88. Then I have random plus radium plus energy. I can have these two. Look at what is on this side. You have only this very particular element that is breaking down on your left hand side. So take your left hand side. If you want to know it is natural, nothing will be added to that thing. It will just be only that element that is breaking down. And here, yeah, what do we have? Here, yeah, we have 222. Two, two, sorry, this is 222. Two, two, sorry, this is 222, two, not 226. Two, this is 222 two, two now. So some people will be, you know, I know a lot of students will be looking at this as a. How uh, is this one? Is it balanced? Yes, it's still balanced. These two multiply by zero because I have something like this. This is what I wrote. Two, zero, minus one, E. So this two is affecting this zero. So two times zero is zero. Two times minus one is minus two. You get that? So 88 minus two will give us 86. It's still balanced. Why is zero plus two, two, two will still give us two. two. You see that? So which means this... Very particular element here emitted two alpha, two beta particle. This two beta particle. So when you see anything like this, it means this you have to multiply this two times this is zero, and this two times this minus one to get what is here and what is here. So this is.
Let me give you, and that's the reason why, if you see that definition, they said there's spontaneous sleep breakdown to give either alpha, like the first one, like this one, or they give beta, like this one. Or they give the because this one now, you know, energy is produced. You get that, and you know, alpha is produced here, two beta is produced here. Like this, let me do another example. Alpha and beta particle in one of the natural reductions. So we can add this two, three, eight. Let's do this 92. And we have this. Oh, this is clear. Then we can have two, you know, four here and two here. Then we have, you know, helium particle, which is alpha. Then I'll have plus two, zero, minus one. Yeah. Get that plus 230. Let me see that 230. I'm just trying to form something to 90. I hope this is correct. Yeah, should be. So energy. So look at this now. Look at this. Is it natural? Yes, sir. Why is it natural? Check your left hand side. You are finding only that very particular element that is breaking down. Only this is clear. You are finding only that element that is breaking down. And here, yeah, I've told us, how do you get, since you have 2 into 4, so how do you get the mass number here? You have to say 2 times 4, that will now be 8. 2 times 2, that will now be 4. So meaning, what you have there is 8. So 8 plus 0, 8 plus 230, that will give us 238 balance. Then we have 2 times 2, that will now give us 4. So 4. Right, we have four. Look at that. We have four plus 90. That gives us 94. 94 minus two times this, two times minus two, uh, two times minus one. That will give us minus two. That will be 92. So it's too correct. So eight plus zero plus this two, three, eight. Four plus 90. That's 94 minus two because this two we affect this minus one, two. We get that. So in this case, we have two alpha particle emitted and two beta particle emitted. We get that. I hope you are getting it. If that element that is breaking down, you have only that element that is breaking down, then it is a natural. Why now we now have artificial? Radioactivity. From the word artificial, I want to read the application from this class. From the word artificial, it means that you know, we have to have artificial. So, artificial means that thing is not breaking down on its own. That thing means it's not breaking down on its own. We are forcing it to happen. So I can say your artificial radioactivity occurs when a radioactive element or a non-radioactive a non-radioactive element are bombarded are bombarded with particles with particles such as proton you can see a bombarded with proton neutrons electrons or any particle or any particle so that they can break down. Can you see that now? You can see this is very, very clean. This is like this. In some cases, I can bombard even an element that is not radioactive. And that's where, that's the, you know, that's the beauty. An element that is not even a radioactive element, I can bombard it, force it, I can force it to break down. Or an element that is radioactive that 
you know, an element that is made back with I can follow food Maybe it is not still for you to break down. I can bombard it and force it to break down. And you see the example. Don't forget, as a natural adaptivity, take your word, your left hand side. If it is only the elements that is there, then it's a natural radioactivity. But let's take examples. Let's take this of artificial. Let's take artificial. Look at this. Look at this. Pay attention to this now. I am 14, 7, nitrogen plus 4, 2, helium, giving us giving us 17, 8, oxygen plus 1, 1, hydrogen plus energy. Is this artificial, sir? Yes, it is artificial. Why? Look at your left hand side. They are they are particles of liquid. And what is the particle they use in breaking this? Because if people look at it, nitrogen is not a radioactive element. But here they have bombarded it with what? With alpha particle. And it's giving them this very particular product. Can you see that? It's giving them this very particular product. So this is artificial. Why? They are using this to break this down. So check it out. From the fact that even most of those elements are not radioactive. When it comes to artificial radioactivity, most times you might not even see them bombarding a radioactive element because they know a radioactive element we emit radiation automatically. You understand? They believe it will emit radiation automatically, so they really don't see them bombarding. But most times in artificial, those elements that are not radioactive, they can bombard it. Why the ones that are already radioactive too, they can bombard. You know, this one that is not radioactive. Let me give you an element that they can bombard too. It's radioactive. But they can actually, you know, they can actually bombard it to give something like this. Look at this. Look at this. And I have two, let me say I have two, three, eight, and I have 90 plus. Please note all this. This is a neutron. Mass number one and a zero. Please check all these things. They're important. One zero neutron. Okay, so giving us two three nine and ninety. Let me just let me say this is ninety two. Just give an example ninety two, and this is giving me ninety three. Neptune plus zero minus one. Helium. Look at this. You know this very particular uranium is radioactive. But they still bombarded, they went ahead and bombarded it with what? With a neutron. You can see. So, when it comes to artificial radioactivity, the elements might be radioactive, the elements might not be radioactive. But when you see that they have added something to it, they have added, look at this one, they added a neutron to it. Look at this one, they bombarded with alpha. Look at this one, they bombarded with a neutron. And it's not giving them this. So, we call it artificial radio. In fact, some textbook we call it an induced radioactivity. And induced. Induced means you forced it. So very, very important. If they bombard it, you examples. You get questions, but you can be better. You know, when you begin to solve questions, you know, then you can get lots of questions. Over and over again. Okay. This 2002, this jump question, 2002, 2002, question 49. They did something like this 23, 
11 Na plus X giving us giving us 20 giving us 20 okay plus 20, 9 fluorine okay plus 4 2 in the reaction so the acting of this x so that's is it better so b he said is it gamma c is it alpha d he said is it neutral so let's understand it now let's go 23 here, 20 here, and 4. That's 24. And this is 23. So I need to write 1 here so that it will be balanced. You see that? 23 plus 1 is 24. 20 plus 4, that's 24 balance. So here is 9 plus 2. It's 11 already. And here is 11 already. So it will be 0. Look at that. So people will go and pick better. You will be wrong. Beta is, is 0 minus 1. Are you seeing that? So, is it alpha? No, alpha is 4, 2 helium. Is it gamma? Gamma don't even have mass or charge. So the answer is neutral. And why? Look at this. Look at how we represent neutral. Can you see? 1, 0, neutral. That's it here. That's why I have to use this example. So the answer is neutral. Just follow that. These things. You actually get all these things. There are a lot of things to do in your time. There are a lot of things to do in your time. So that is what we call your artificial kind of radioactivity. Anytime they are bombarding that very particular element, either radioactive or not radioactive, in as much as they are bombarding it with something. So it is a it is an artificial kind of radioactivity. I want to believe this is clear. Let me talk about radioisotopes. Let me talk about radioisotopes. Yeah. You know, isotopes from the word isotopes. Do you remember the same word? Some people are forgetting. When I talk about isotopy, what are we talking? Different mass number, the same number. So when you talk about radioisotopes, in you know, that they are isotopes that are made artificially. They are made artificially. See, that means they are from by bombarding. By bombarding. The isotopes that are made artificially by bombarding neutrons. So you are bombarding something with neutrons, or you are bombarding it with protons, okay? Or, or deuterium. Let me quickly chip in that. Some people will be like, "What is deuterium? What's the meaning of this?" Okay, we, are, we understand neutron already. Isotope of hydrogen. Don't forget, we have three isotopes of hydrogen. And these things are useful here. We have three isotopes of hydrogen. Okay. We have one one hydrogen, which we call the proteome. Do you get that? This is what we call this protein. We have two one hydrogen. That's what we call the deuterium. So when you see them write two one, don't be surprised. It's deuterium. Why, if you have 3 1 hydrogen, that's the word tritium. So you'll be seeing all these things in radioactivity. Just know they are, you know, know all this, know how we write them. Because sometimes we still need to do them by nuclear reaction. So don't be surprised when you see them writing. So know all this. Why you have, you already know that 1, 0 is for neutron. You see that now. So know this, please. This is for neutron. This is for proteum. Right? This is for protein. This is for deuterium. This is for tritium. Please, you need to know.
let's take examples of the radio isotopes. Let's take examples. I can have 34, 10, you know, this, this giving me, oh, let me, let me use, let me use this, don't worry. Let me use bromine so that I'll be sure. So I can have bromine, let me use this one, 79, 35, you get that now. Plus one zero neutral. You can see this artificial radioactivity. So giving them 80, you get that, 80, 35 bromine plus energy. So this is radio isotope. The meaning is that you can see that 79 plus 1, 80, the same element is what we are still getting after they have bombarded it. The same element is what we are still getting. So we say this is radio isotopes. So after bombarding this, we are still getting bromine as our element. I believe this is clear. Another one we can have, you know, cobalt, right? We can have cobalt, maybe 59, 27. Then we are bombarding it with neutron also. You get that gist now. We are bombarding it with neutron also, still now giving us cobalt. 60 and 27 then we now have plus energy so look at that 59 plus 1 is still giving us 60 right 27 plus 0 is still giving us 27 so you are bombarding when you bombard it you are still getting same element so still getting same element when you bombard so it's an artificial type of radioactivity which we call the Deuterium, then we call it isotopes. I want to believe we are getting something here. I want to believe we are actually getting something. So, all these things are very, very different. They are very, very different. Yeah, they are very important. So, that we'll be able to solve a lot of questions. I tell you, this is one of the things Let's now talk. Don't forget, I said in radioactivity, a lot of energy is generated. In fact, can I show you a lot of a lot of a lot of countries, some developed countries actually use this energy as we call it the nuclear energy. Yes, we call it the nuclear energy. So energy is being generated, a whole lot of energy is given mm -hmm. out. In fact, the energy given out during radioactivity is much more, much more than it can be used to generate nuclear power. It can be used as a source of power. So let's talk about this very particular nuclear energy now. Let's talk about nuclear energy. So don't forget, and that's the reason why you see most times when we write the equation, you can see here, I'm writing energy, I'm writing energy here. So they're writing energy because a lot and the nuclear energy we are talking about can be from two types. This nuclear energy we are talking about can be from two types. What we call the nuclear fission, and we can have what we call the nuclear fusion. These are questions that we are going to be asked in exam. Very very important. So we can ask them. Nuclear fusion. Okay. So what do we mean? Let's take the first one. What do we mean by nuclear? What do we mean by nuclear fusion? From the word fusion, you are breaking fusion. Let me define that. All right. Is this 
is a nuclear reaction. This is a nuclear reaction in which the nucleus, in which the nucleus of heavy, okay, the nucleus of heavy radioactive element is is splitted, is splitted into different lighter nuclei. Okay, that's clear. So a process whereby you are splitting together, you are splitting the fact that you are not getting a bigger one. Then you are not getting a smaller one rather. You are breaking it down to get a smaller one. Then it is nuclear fission. So when you break down to get a smaller one, you are doing nuclear fission. Let's take an example. Look at this. Then I have one four one fifty six plus I have this ninety two thirty six and I have this plus two one zero neutron plus energy. Now look at that. The first thing, don't let us consider nuclear fission first. What type of radioactivity is this? Somebody should have been able to answer that. What type of radioactivity is this? Natural or artificial? Definitely natural. Check the right hand side. You are not adding anything to this very particular random. It's breaking down naturally. So it is what it is a it is an active. Uh, it is a natural radioactivity. Check here. I've given you the clue. When we check here, you see you are not combining it with anything. It was this that broke down to all this. So it's nuclear fission. And the type of radioactivity here is what is a natural type of radioactivity. I want to Because breaking down is a natural type of radioactivity that also cannot be classified under the nuclear issue, which means you are actually breaking down. So if you look at this, you have broken it down into one four one, you know, broken down. Sorry, this barium. Let me write the element. So this barium. 141, 56 barium, krypton, and a neutron. So breaking this down to give all this is what we refer to. That is nuclear issue. That is clear. Why the nuclear fusion? Fusion means coming together. So if this is, which means if all this, which means if all this in turn can come together and they give this, that means it is. Fusion. Do you get that now? So let me still give my definition for people that are jotting something down. Nuclear fusion. So what do we mean by nuclear fusion? I've said that before. That the nuclear fusion means what you are actually coming together. Nuclear fusion is coming together. Coming together. So nuclear fusion is a nuclear reaction. Is a nuclear reactor which involves which involves coming together which involves coming together of two light of two light of two what of two light nuclei to form a heavier to form the heavier nucleus with the release of energy. The release of energy. Can you see that? And examples, let me just give you an example, like maybe one or two. So you have 12 magnesium, can you see that? Plus 42 helium, giving us 2814. This plus energy. Now, the first thing that we ask, what type of radioactivity is this? Definitely, this type of radioactivity is what is artificial. And why is it artificial? Because you can see them bombarding this magnesium with what? It's alpha particle. Can you see that? So 24 plus 428, 14. So this two is now coming together 
to give us a bigger one. That's why you can see the mass number of this is greater than all this. 24, 4. Look at the mass number here, 28. So these two are coming together to give us this. And that's, that's nuclear. Let me give one or two examples. Let me give this very familiar one too. Let me give this to you. Like I have two one hydrogen plus three one this giving us four two helium plus one zero neutron plus energy. Look at that. These two is coming together to give us a bigger one. That's why if you look at the mass here, it's bigger than the two mass that you have here. The mass number here. Just only this mass number is bigger than the two mass number here. So 2 plus 3, 5, 4 plus 1, 5, 1 plus 1, 2. Just note that irrespective of any type of reaction form, the equation must be balanced. The mass number must be balanced. The atomic number must be balanced. So this is a nuclear fusion. This is nuclear fusion. So fusion means breaking down. Fusion means forming together. Fusion means fusion. F U S I O N. Why fusion? F I S N I O N means what? Means breaking down. So fusion coming together. Fusion means breakdown. Oh, I will do another video on half life. That's another interesting aspect. But let me just finish up with importance of radioactivity. I want to believe we have learned a whole lot from this class. So you have to go over the video, you know, over and over again if you are not getting it. And try to practice with questions for you to know if you are getting it. So let's see the uses of radioactivity. I'll just state a few and that will be all for today. So you go over it over and over again. Test your hand with fast question. Try to solve. Put your comment in the comment box section. Ask your question. If the video is helpful, let us know. Too much. So number one, one of the uses of radioactivity is for medical uses. Yes, for medical uses. Don't forget, I said unlike the ad estuary, beginning of the class, we said we can use it to cure cancerous growth. So the ad estuary can be used to cure cancerous growth, and these are some of the important. So very very important. Very very. So when you introduce them to add and you can use that class to make them. So that is one of the reasons we call it urban city. Yes, we call it urban city. And if you see so many people in there, this street for this street, you can use it for, you know, this urban city. You can use it for regulating the project. Yes, regulating the project that you can actually do. You know, these are radio isotopes that we use iodine, phosphorus, thirty-two. All these are what we use. Like this one now, we use this two now. We can actually use them for treating. Can use them for treating the cancer of the thyroid gland of the thyroid gland. Thyroid gland and leukemia. So the standard so you can use that. So you are the one that find your people that you see on the you know, and use for treating thyroid gland. Let me put respectively so that you not get it confused. So your iodine one that one can be used for treating cancer of the thyroid gland, while your phosphorus that's two can be used for helping. So, yes. Let me write it for people that are to regulate 
regulate the dosage for people that are writing the dosage and yes, dosage and confine the irradiation. Yeah, to prevent to prevent damage to L to LT tissues. To LT tissues. So you can do some of this research yourself. They are wonderful topics and you know. So in the medical a whole lot of business in the medical to use this. So I'm just trying to summarize them so that it will you know it will spawn up. It will spawn up actually research about them so that's why you can use that yes those bacteria and probably microbism in those systems. Very, very important. Very, very important you can, you know, you can, can use them for sterilization. So another one we can use them is the PTSD. You can use them for accurate measurements in the industry. If you go to the industry that produces so we can use your better your data to accurately accurately measure the thickness to accurately measure the thickness can use them to accurately measure the thickness of materials like plastic can use it to measure like plastic you know paper and paper metals etc so these are industrial uses of how blood of uses. That's why I actually, you know, actually found out it's because of their uses. You can use them in the agriculture. Number four. So number four. So you can add agriculture to in the agriculture. So in the agricultural sector, you can actually use them to so very, very important. So you can just take time to you can take time to go over this thing over and over. If you are not want to know something like that, you can just do that and search uh system of the culture. Very, very important. We use them as radioactive hazards to use them as radioactive hazards. You can read all these things. You just try to stay with them. Use them as radioactive you know, very, very important. And, you know, all these uses have their wide range of uses. Yeah, all these uses have their wide range of uses. You can use them as radiocarbon dating. You know, just can, don't want to take much of our time because the video is already long. So we can, we can use them for that dating. Carbon dating and a lot of uses like that. So, for all these uses, uh, what we actually use uh, radioactivity for. So, um, you can buy them, you can read them on your own. These are uses of radioactivity. So, uh, I will stop here for today. I'm going to make another video that will talk about Africa. That's another interesting aspect of, you know, that's another interesting aspect of radioactivity. Yes, because you can actually use one of the uses here. That I wrote is that you can actually use this for tracing the age of you know, probably rocks that have existed millions ago. You can actually use it, you can even use it to know the, the life, the decay life of some material. And that tells you how interesting these things are. So, that is that for radioactivity, guys. If you are just watching this YouTube channel, kindly subscribe to this channel. This is one of the best channels as far as chemistry content is, you know, chemistry content is concerned. It's one of the best channels. So, if you are new to this channel, I just watch you need click the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that every week like this, when I upload my video, you would be notified.
So till the next time we're going to be meet, meeting, till next we're going to be meeting, go over this thing over and over again. If you're writing jam, this is an explanatory, you know, it's an explanatory concept on radioactivity. You can use this to answer questions properly from your past question. If you're a teacher or two, you want to believe you have gained one or two things from what I've actually explained. So I love you guys. This is Chemistry and God. Till the next time that we're going to be meeting here, be fine, still chemically active. I love you guys. Thank you. Thank you. God bless.